Here's another problem. Starting from rest, an object moves with constant acceleration of positive 7 meters per second squared, reaching a velocity of positive 9 meters per second. Find its displacement. Starting from rest, an object moves with constant acceleration of positive 7 meters per second squared, reaching a velocity of positive 9 meters per second. Find its displacement. So again, I'd like you to do two things. First of all, make sure you copy this problem accurately into your notes so that you can refer to it after I've erased it from the board. That's important. And then please try to solve the problem. Please try to use the systematic approach and systematic notation that we're learning in these videos. Now this is still a very simple one-dimensional motion, so there's not much of interest about the path. We're just going from one place to another. We can just call that direction the positive x-direction. Uh, there's no need to break things into components. So nothing really interesting here happens until step three again. Uh, I'm sorry, until step four. Um, step four, remember, is where we write all the kinematics variables. write all five of the kinematics variables, and then write down our given values and the question. So remember our technique is now to just carefully read the problem word for word from the beginning. And every time we come across a given value, we'll plug it in. And every time we come across the question, we'll plug in a question mark. Starting from rest. Uh, so did you notice that that actually gives us a given value? If we're starting from rest, doesn't that tell us the initial velocity? If we're starting from rest, the initial velocity must, must have been zero. This is a kind of hidden information that students oftentimes miss. All right, so starting from rest, so our initial velocity was zero. An object moves with constant acceleration. That's how we know that we can use this uh, general kinematics approach. Positive seven meters per second squared. In these videos, we're not going to write down the units, but we're always going to write down the sign on the acceleration, positive seven reaching a velocity of 9 meters per second. Now, I hope that was clear that that was the final velocity, because that's the velocity that we're reaching. So that must come at the end of the experiment, not at the beginning. So the final velocity is positive 9. We must include the sign. We're not going to include the units. Find the object's displacement. I really hope that you're getting into the habit of not just writing down the numbers, but also writing down the question mark. This is a hugely helpful technique throughout physics and in other subjects as well. So try to imitate that aspect of the notation as well. Okay, so again, uh, if you're really taking these videos seriously, you should already be getting in the habit of always writing down the signs, even in front of positive numbers. All right, so here's the information we have. Again, the biggest problem that people would have here is missing the kind of hidden information that the initial velocity was zero. Um, so the solution is read word for word carefully, and um, if you um, and uh, then keep rereading if necessary. Um, how would you know if you had missed some information? Well, remember we're not ready to pick an equation until we know three numbers. We can't go on to step five and pick a kinematics equation until we know three numbers. So if you had originally not noticed this hidden information, if you hadn't noticed that the initial velocity was zero. You'd say, well, gee, I know I'm missing something because I only have two numbers. We can't pick an equation until we have three numbers. So then hopefully you would go back and reread the problem more carefully and eventually pick up on the hidden information that the initial velocity was zero. Now that we have three numbers, we can pick out the right equation. What's the variable we don't care about? The variable we don't care about is time. So you should look at your list of equations and let's use the equation that does not include time.
obviously this is the equation that's a, that does not include time. Now we plug in and solve. What do we plug in for v final x? Well, first of all, this is a signed number, so we put in parentheses. Don't plug in 9. Plug in positive 9, and we're going to square that. Now, of course, in this case, it doesn't really matter whether this is positive or negative because we're going to square it, but let's build good habits. Always plug in the numbers with their signs. Put in parentheses to separate the signs. So v initial, well, that's just going to be 0. The one number you don't need a sign for is 0. It wouldn't make sense to say that 0 is plus 0 or minus 0, so you don't need to include a sign for 0. I'll put in parentheses for the acceleration, and now I can put in that it's not 7, it's positive 7. And what do we plug in for the displacement? Well, we don't plug in anything. That's the unknown. Now we simplify and solve. 9 squared is 81. 0 squared is 0, so that term is going to drop out. 2 times 7 is 14. So we end up with 81 equals 14 times delta x. We need to um, get the x by itself, get rid of the 14. Well, do the opposite. The 14 is being multiplied times the delta x. The opposite of multiplication is division, and we have to divide both sides. All right, and then we can get out our calculator, and we'll find that 81 divided by 14 is approximately 5.8. Eighty-one divided by fourteen on the calculator is approximately five point eight. I hope you didn't write your answer like this. First of all, our answer came out positive, so let's include a positive sign, and we got to now put in the units. Even though we're not using carrying the units along in our calculations, we definitely need a unit on our answer. Otherwise, it's meaningless. So the displacement was positive five point eight meters. Let me remind you that in these videos. Uh, just to simplify things, I'm not going to deal with the issue of significant figures. So I'm not rounding things off to the correct number of significant figures. Um, why did I round this off to 0.8 and not to something else? Because uh, I felt like it. I'm just going to round things off to whatever feels natural. Um, so if you need to use significant figures, you'll have to learn about that um, someplace besides this series of videos. Here we're just going to focus on the basic process for kinematics without worrying about the right number of significant figures. Before I forget, one thing I might mention is um, that an important part of kinematics is doing projectile motion and free fall. Projectile motion and free fall are important examples of constant acceleration kinematics, but that's not what we're doing yet. Um, projectile motion and free fall happen when the only force on the object is gravity. Projectile motion is when the only force on the object is gravity. Uh, but for these objects that we've been talking about, that hasn't, there's been no reason to think that's the case. I haven't really told you what the situations were, um, but we haven't been dealing with projectile motion yet. Projectile motion is when you have an object flying through the air only under the influence of gravity. That's an important type of problem, uh, but I think it's better to learn about kinematics in general first, and then do projectile motion and free fall. So we're going to get to projectile motion and free fall eventually. Um, but um, not right now. Before we do projectile motion and free fall, I don't think you can really understand those uh, very well unless first you've learned about constant acceleration in general. All right, so what we're doing here is what's called constant acceleration kinematics, where so far we've focused on one dimensional motion. Um, eventually, we're going to apply this to projectile motion and free fall, but we haven't done that yet. Um, but again, uh, even if you're mainly interested in projectile motion, I think it's very important to learn about general kinematics first. So that's what we're doing now. Okay, again, if you got this problem wrong, you should go back and do it again. Um, but even if you got it right, if you got it right without using the systematic approach and systematic notation, go back and do it again until you can do it using our systematic approach. That's our purpose in going through these problems. All the problems I've given you so far are, again, quite easy. The goal here is so far not to do hard problems, but to get a systematic approach that will serve us well on the harder problems as well.